So what do you think? Is this a park? Um, there's a, something that looks like grass. There's kids. There's a play cage. Um, it might be a park. How about this? Sure looks like a park. Uh, many of us think of parks as beautifully manicured spaces. This one is so nice that you could probably charge admission to go to it. And actually, they do. This is Butchard Garden. So maybe a park is defined as a place uh, where there's no price of admission. People think of parks as places where you can touch nature, where you can be touched by nature. Parks are places where you put tiny fish in a creek and you expect them to return back up the Fraser as full-grown salmon a few years later. Parks are actually the classroom where we train the next generation of environmental activists. Say parks, and some of us think of urban parks. Is there a point where a city park is uh, too small? This is the smallest park ever occupied and surrounded by police. <laughs> and this is Canada's largest park. The best place to see it is from space. This vast expanse of wilderness, uh, Wood Buffalo National Park, is larger than Denmark and larger than the Netherlands. And Canada's uh, largest park is near the Alberta tar sands, which cover an area that's three times the size of Wood Buffalo National Park. Actually, the land dedicated to our love of oil is larger than all of our national parks combined. The Canadian government provides a lot of support to uh, big projects like these, and to celebrate our 150th, we need to think about supporting big projects and big parks. Statistics show that actually fewer and fewer people go to our beautiful national parks. Family road trips and boat trips just don't fit our lifestyle anymore. We have a number of young families uh, who make the deliberate choice not to own a car. National parks far from where we live are absolutely essential for protecting wildlife, but they were good projects for 1967. Now that's not a reason to abandon our national parks. We need to keep them intact for future generations. And we treasure our big national parks because there are places where there's no light. There's no people living there. But to celebrate our 150th, I think we need to build parks where the lights are on, where people live. And this photograph uh, came from Chris Hadfield uh, last night, one, one of our famous Canadians. Uh, here's one bold idea for BC to celebrate Canada's uh, 150th birthday. Experience the Fraser is a network of trail trails that will connect together about 2.5 million people living along the Fraser. From canyon to coast, from Hope to Richmond, from the mountains to the Salish Sea. The ultimate goal is to create 550 kilometers of trails using the Fraser as the backbone of this network. 60% of BC residents live along this corridor. Half of the trail is already in place. In fact, there's these disconnected segments of trail that are owned by cities that are, some of them are provincial dikes, some of them are owned by Metro Vancouver Regional Parks or Fraser Valley Regional District Parks. Experience the Fraser is the fully integrated concept plan to connect these segments, to close the gaps in this trail network. And along the way, there's going to be a number of natural, social, and cultural attractions. This big regional puzzle of a project has many pieces. It's a collection of dozens of little parks along the way. So what is a park? Is a collection of trails a park? Is a string of parks a park itself? Well, of course they are. This big experience the Fraser project includes a few hundred existing sites and activity nodes along the way. Ce grand projet va nous permettre de participer à l'expérience du fleuve Fraser. Ce grand projet va nous permettre de mieux apprécier notre histoire, notre industrie, notre joie de vivre, nos différentes cultures à travers la région et le Canada et une nature 
très précieuse. I've been a public servant for decades. This is the best community project I've ever come across. It is at once a network of trails, a network of heritage markers and important sites, a network uh, of nodes of activity, and a network that is connected to other trails in the region, connected to the Trans-Canada Trail, and connected to trails in the United States. A few diehard hikers will want to do the whole 550 kilometers when it's all connected together. But most of us are going to be using the trail for a quick loop on the weekend, not the full 550 kilometers which brings us to the extraordinary importance of bridges. Bridges for pedestrians, hikers, and cyclists, not just for cars. Around the world, bridges are being recycled to form, form part of big trail projects. I wish this was my idea, but it's a borrowed idea. These three bridges on this slide are part of a 400-kilometer trail from Pittsburgh to Washington. It's become one of the world's greatest trails. Bridges are absolutely fascinating structures. I don't know if it's a combination of the water, the wide expanse of the view around, the sheer ingenuity of these structures that attracts uh, crowds to bridges, but there's something truly photogenic about bridges and people, lots of people. On these remarkable photographs, there's so many people that it's hard to see the grass on the bridge. Bridges across urban rivers are fantastic locations for special events. Because you know what? Bridges in our city happen to be right in the middle of where people live. Highline Park is an oasis in the heart of New York City. You can walk 20 blocks above the traffic. It's a peaceful greenway in the heart of Manhattan, floating above it all. Like, um, Parks like this do a lot for humans living in our increasingly crowded cities. And when you look at this image, is this a park? Is it fake nature? Well, no, it, it is a park. It is a very smart reuse of public infrastructure. And just in case I didn't give you enough examples, here's a couple more. A new bridge is being built across the harbor in San Francisco, and rather than demolish the old bridge, they want to reuse it and I think they're very smart. The walkway over the Hudson is, the, is now the anchor for tourism in the entire region where it's located. It is such a draw for tourist dollars that construction of a new 21-story elevator is being planned. Actually, it's going to be under construction uh, this summer, and the elevator is gonna bring people from the bridge deck down to the water so you can enjoy the view and you can actually touch the water. Could this view, uh, this viewpoint be um, at the old Portman Bridge? Could this be a bold and unique way to experience the Fraser? Metro Vancouver is gonna grow by another million people in the next 30 years, and we need more parks. We need more open space close to where people live. So let's ask uh, big questions. What is a park? Let's not be afraid of big ideas like turning an old bridge into a greenway. To complete a project like Experience the Fraser by 2017, we need to bring partners together. There's a lot of people who have to decide that they're going to work hand in hand to uh, make this happen. We may need land and money, of course. But you know, if the government won't spend on public space for people to enjoy, who will? Who will? So let's get commu commitments together, let's get commitments today so that we can make it happen and build it by 2017. And when Experience the Fraser is completed, we need to invite others, we need to invite the world to join us and experience what will be one of the world's greatest trails. Je garde encore d'excellents souvenirs d'Expo 67 à Montréal. On a bâti une île en plein milieu du fleuve Saint-Laurent. Expo 67 a permis euh, au monde entier de découvrir ce grand fleuve, le fleuve Saint-Laurent. Il faut faire la même chose avec le Fraser avant 2017. Je vous remercie beaucoup. Thank you.
comment, comment on peut se servir des célébrations du 150 ans pour reconnecter non seulement le fleuve Fraser, mais les parcs du Canada et aller rechercher ces espaces publics? Les, les gens n'ont pas besoin d'être convaincus. On n'a pas besoin de les convaincre d'aller visiter un parc. Un, un parc est l'endroit où la famille, s'ils n'ont pas prévu d'autres activités, c'est là qu'ils vont aller durant la fin de semaine. Alors, euh, toute célébration qui va être organisée dans les parcs euh, est en, garantit un succès. Alors, euh, je pense que c'est euh, la façon de célébrer. Oui. Merci beaucoup, Guétard Royer. Merci.